On this video, I'm going to review the latest mini tripod that I just received in the mail, do an unboxing, show some of the things I've been able to use it for, some of the things that it doesn't work well for at all, and some of the things need to be upgraded if you're going to use it in a heavy-duty application. In, in this case, this is footage shot with the tripod. I'll try to include some of the tips that I've learned over many years of using tripods and cameras and shooting video and posting video. We have over 2,000 videos out there, and I've learned a lot along the way. I'm going to try to pass some of it on. Now, today's short video is going to be about something I think everybody that I know has some interest in, and I'm going to show this, and I'm going to give some good information you can use very quickly in your own life. This is a little mini tripod. This is my old one that I've had for 10 years or something, and I've got an upgraded one that I think you're really going to be impressed with. Now, many of my friends have an interest in photography and video, just like I do. Many of them post things on YouTube or have their own site like Turbo Steve does. But this is a little tool that I, I have to show this, and I wanted to explain why I think it's a very useful tool. Uh, it's, it's a little, it's called a mini tripod. Now, I just want to make sure there's no directions in there. Don't need to, you don't really need directions anyway. But I'll tell the story at the end of this video of how this evolved. But right now to show this, I got this off Amazon. It's $6.95, and if you have Prime, there's no shipping. But here's what's significant about it. In the past, I want to just put that up there. You put these two together, and they look pretty similar. The most important thing about a mini tripod, you got to be able to put it in your pocket, or it's not really going to, you got to leave it home. Well, when you're doing motorcycle videos like we are, what's important is not only you can put it in your jacket pocket, your pocket or whatever, but, but the, it's usable that you can use it for various things. And I want to show some of the things that I've been able to use this on. So the first thing is I want to look at this side by side. You've got the stiff leg one, which basically has three legs. These are very common and a little place to put your camera or your phone. And then you have the flexi leg one, and flex, the flexi leg one is like a spider. And look at how these legs go, and think of some of the things you can do. <laughs> you can hang it upside down from a tree, and among other things. But, but here's the thing, because most of my friends are involved in some way in motorcycling, and everybody wants to see what they look like riding their motorcycle. Well, hell, you just go get your camera, take it down to a road where there's not a lot of traffic, Put it in the street, ride by. Put it up on a rock, ride by. <laughs> Glue it to your helmet, ride by. Whatever. But the point is, this one is, has been served me well, and the people that have followed my channel know if from time to time I do get the urge to see how a certain turn in the road would look or whatever. But, but this one, you have so many more choices with, and this one is really, for $7, is really worth every penny. Now the reason I find this handy because number one I have to be able to put it in my pocket. I, I can't carry a big tripod around me. Number two in the shop a lot of time I'm working on something when I'm repairing a fairing or doing some carbon fiber work and I want to put the camera where there's no way I can get the camera. I just can't lay the camera up here. Well this allows me to get the camera into spots that I'd never be able to get it in realistically or conveniently. Now I know another thing that you can do with this is this mounts, and I, got, I have to find an appropriate thing to show. You can mount this to like, and they show as an example on Amazon, you can mount this around a railing, face this up. I'm just trying to picture how many different places you could put this. You can wrap it around things. It, it makes like a little um, a railing or something. Because the thing with all photography and with all video is getting the camera where you want the camera. And that's the whole purpose of a tripod. A big tripod, yeah, it has a lot of good uses, but boy, does this have a lot of uses too. And, and being creative about it, it just makes it more fun to do your photography or your video or both. So I wanted to share a very important story, very important. Now, when I first got the, the original little one many, many years ago, I had the same exact camera. I've had three or four of these since then. And here's what happens. If you notice, this camera, I want to just turn it on. When it's 
taking pictures, the lens is sticking out. So what happens is, when you go, I want to close this, I don't want to damage your camera, because what I tried to do in the very beginning, I was so excited about having one of these little tripods, I went down a long meadow boulevard where you can go at extremely high speeds, and you can really go through the gears, and you can do all your fancy stuff. And what I wanted to do, I put the tripod down in the road. And what I wanted to do, <laughs> this is funny, as, as I went by with the bike, the wind just went whoosh, and it fell onto the lens and put a scratch in the lens and the camera was never useful after that. So that was the end of my adventure with, <laughs> with having the, the tripod and trying to go by at, a, at an extremely high speed that would record. I thought I'd be making a real fancy video and instead I ruined the lens on the camera. So now another thing that's really important, when, a lot of times you'd be putting this, let me just make this little attachment a little tighter so the camera stays solid. A phone would be even worse because you'd be, it'd be more, the center of gravity will be higher. And depending on how big the camera is, I, this is an important concept for people who don't have an engineering background. If you put this on, a, yeah, you almost can balance it, but it's like trying to balance a coin on edge. Well, if you do this, you'll notice, oh, you can balance it, but boy, it's a little tipsy. Oh, oh yeah. Well, in, in other words, the further apart you put the legs, the bigger of a footprint you make, the more stable a camera becomes. And that's the advantage of this that, that just makes it wor so worthwhile. You can make it that, now I bet you if I do this, uh, I can drive by with a car and not have the wind blow that over. And that's an important thing. Now I know I've seen all the Turbo Steve's videos that he posts and he gets the camera and gets his bike going by and, and various things. It's really a handy thing to have this. Now, I have to be honest about this. I have had two of these that the leg has broken off. And so what I've done is before I even use this, I'll put a little bit of epoxy on the base of each leg just to make it a little stronger because I'm using this like a heavy-duty item. I'm not using this like a, a um, I don't know what you would call it, like a tourist would use it where you're just taking a picture of the Eiffel Tower. My goal with this is I'm going to be putting this on rocks and on trees and on different places and trying to drive by where the wind of going by might be a problem. Okay, one of the problems I've had, because I use these like a heavy-duty thing, I don't want these legs coming out while I'm 100 miles from home. So what I do is they, they pull right out and I take push this back in as hard as you can, it usually goes back in with no problem. Now, obviously you could use it like that, but I wanna make it more heavy duty. So what I'm gonna do is mix up a batch of JB Weld, and I'm gonna JB Weld these right in place, and I'll show how I do that, and that makes this an even more heavy duty tripod, more appropriate for using on motorcycles. You know, we use JB Weld for so many things around the shop, I always have plenty of it. But this will be the material of choice for this little job. Now, I think if you didn't use this as a heavy-duty thing, you would never have to do this. And those legs, by the way, they do just push right in. But I don't want them popping out, when I, and I don't want them coming out when I'm driving by on a motorcycle and the camera falls over. That's the other thing. So this is kind of like uh, fixing it before it breaks. And you always want to start a JB Weld just a little bit. It gives you plenty of working time, usually more than a half an hour, 45 minutes. Heat will accelerate the cure, make it cure quicker if you're in a rush. I really never use the five minute. I have had better luck from my days in aviation using regular JB Weld, not the five minute. So I'm not sure if you can see the area. I just want to fill that area. So it's going to make the leg attachment just a little bit more heavy duty. And I try not to make it, even though I don't care if it's a little sloppy, I don't want to make it any sloppier than it has to be. Let the rubber go back in. The rubber will attach itself and act as a kind of a gasket there. And I'll take some Q-tips and just get the, the overage off. A little bit of acetone on a paper towel will get any, any you, you get on a spot you don't want to see. In my case, the most important thing is not the appearance, but that this thing is heavy duty. Because I plan on using this under some severe conditions that probably this is not really made for. And I do it, I know they make 
tripods that are a lot more expensive but I've had relatively good luck for seven bucks and again they come from Amazon and if you don't if you're not as heavy duty as I am I guess you don't even have to do this this would be an optional thing and once I do the two other legs we'll put this aside to dry and we'll be good to go so the tripods are reinforced and we're ready to uh, put them to use the next time we get to ride the JB weld is a good idea actually before they break and you have a camera sitting on them when they break that's the other part anyway and I did hurt a camera once already by not heeding the, the rules of engagement so again I think it's safe to say for seven bucks you can have yourself a little bit of fun or and, and I gotta share something I've talked to several people who went and bought a video camera and a GoPro and an everything and did basically what I do and so and went home and said I went through this turn at 100 miles an hour or something, and, and when I looked at the video, it looked like I was going in slow motion. I had somebody else tell me, oh, I, I went by, I followed, somebody followed me and took a picture, and I look like I'm fat as can be. Well, there's, the, camera, the camera has a way of making all of us bigger than we really are. That's a given. And when you ride through where, especially like a 106 thing, it looks a lot slower on video than it does when you're holding onto the handlebars. That's just the reality of video. And, and I'm sure on TV they always say women look bigger or fatter or whatever they are. But there's a reality to video. Yeah, you can, you can do a lot of things in life that in your mind you look like Valentino Rossi going around. And when you look at the picture you go, who's that guy going down? So yeah, that's, that, I've gotten used to it. it. All video, that's true of all video. It, it always looks slower and you always look a little bigger now i remember when i was coaching i coached several people in my lifetime and one of them was chris and i would get behind her bike and we would do the thing going through the twisties and and i always remember her saying that can't be me on the bike because she was she was like a, a skinny mini and when i shot that video she looked like me so <laughs> anyway the coaching did work out well she went on to have track days she enjoyed Never really hurt the bike, nothing that I couldn't fix. And I guess we've all had a lot of fun for a very little money. These make it the, the, the thing I always like in life. When you can have a lot of fun for a very little money, it's a good deal. Anyway, I thought I'd share that today and hope you did enjoy the video. And thanks so much for watching. So I think you can have a lot of fun for a very little money with these tripods. They seem to work pretty good. I have tried to share the little upgrade I've had to make on the legs on some of them not all of them but if that happens to you don't throw it away that's for sure here's some of the footage I shot with the little tripods years ago this is old footage but you just can get some idea you just lay it on the ground somewhere and drive by and uh, well you get to see what you look get to see what your bike looks like or whatever get to see if you're gaining weight or uh, oh, whatever <laughs> eating too much pizza I guess I don't know but anyway, it is a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with it. I have a, for people that are new to the channel, or by the only time they uh, have seen a windy video, we have over 2,000 videos out there. I have a small bike collection that I ride and work on and share the information with other people who enjoy older motorcycles, restored, customized, worked on. Uh, and of course, we tried to ride as many miles as we can every year based on how many days we have available and how much time we have and if the weatherman uh, cooperates. But I do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll join us again. And thanks so much for watching. So if you enjoyed the video, I hope you share it with your friends, and of course I hope, most of all, that we'll see you tomorrow, and thanks again for watching.